Hey everyone, and welcome to Ink Spotlights from Comics Well Spring. This is the series where we shine the spotlight on immensely talented creators who print with us. And today we're joined by Wells Thompson to talk about his books, some of his journey, his current Kickstarter, and a little bit more. Wells, welcome to the show. It's great talking to you again. Um, it was great meeting you at Baltimore Comic Con earlier this year. Tell us all about uh, Smut Number 2 and your other books as well. Ooh, all right. Uh, yeah, my name is Wells. I do a whole bunch of comics. Uh, let's see. Smut, num Smut is a series that is very like a uh, 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 not safe for work erotic comedy, essentially, or slice of life comedy is, is how I like to pitch it. Uh, it's about three friends who are struggling in their in their relationships in different ways uh, and try to lean on each other and, and support each other in, in fixing those problems. Uh, things get steamy. It's, it is what it is, but it's, it's ultimately a book about relationships and communication and boundaries and, and how to, you know, build healthy relationships, um, and, and have good sex while you're at it. Nice. Uh, <laughs> love it. And yeah, number one, uh, we made earlier this year, it, it killed on, uh, Kickstarter. Uh, uh we ended with about 600 backers um and yeah we we just launched number two uh earlier this week at time of recording okay. so that's been going pretty well too <laughs> and you hit goal you said within like the first 12 hours of that yeah first episode. day it's the fastest we've ever hit goal oh, um okay. our, our previous record was around the 72 hour mark and then this one was before 24 hours i woke up that you know the next morning and it was it was funded so oh, that's so exciting yeah, really, it, it's it's a very different spirit of running a campaign versus uh, it's the last, you know, 24 hours and we still got to find a place to, to we got to make up some ground. Um, so very glad that we got to uh, uh, get that out of the way early. And now it's not so much. How do we get this thing funded as well, what cool stretch goals can we make? And, and yeah. Hit? That's always the, the hard part. It's just like the anxiety you get just trying to get funded. And then you're just like, okay, now where's it going to go from here? Like where, you know, hopefully it doesn't stop and hopefully it keeps rolling. And also the last 48 hours of any Kickstarter is so unpredictable. Like it, you could almost double your goal um, at that period. And it's insane how that can work sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, we Totally. Oh. We, we've, uh, I, I wouldn't say we've ever doubled our, our goal, but we have, you know, it always is like, okay, we'll, we'll end around here just based on what we, we think it is. And, and a lot of times it winds up shooting way past that, and, you know, thank God. <laughs> what do you think is like contributed to like the success of your Kickstarters? Um, these are some awesome numbers you're able to put out there. Um, and I know you've done it for, we were just talking being yeah. on stage a little bit, but what, what kind of contributes to that? Cause I know some people really do struggle just hitting $500 or even their goal in general. Like right. maybe you have some advice or secrets, maybe not secrets. But uh, I wish I did. I've been hunting for those secrets forever. <laughs> uh you know cat calumnia uh has i'm sure just a log mm. of uh of my of things that i've sent her like hey how do you do this how do i how do i make this happen so yeah that, that feeling of like maybe one day i'll find the secret i don't think it, i don't think there is one um I've, I've come to to conclude uh it's a mix of of things uh i did a little bit of comics journalism before I started uh, trying to put comics out there. So that helped me, that helped people know kind of who I was. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, it didn't make me huge or anything, but at the very least people kind of had a familiarity with my name and my opinions. Um, second thing was, like you said, we've been doing it for a long time. And when we started, we Kickstarter was in a bit of a boom. So mm -hmm. it, it definitely was the right time to get in. Um, and the uh, third and almost certainly most importantly is blind luck. Uh, just we we got lucky the first time and we we held on to that audience. But uh, fourth and the, the thing that I think we control the most is uh, and there's no way to sound this without sounding like full of yourself. But I think we put out good books. Yeah, um, I, I gen we genuinely put a lot of work into making sure that they look and feel and and uh you know, read as well as possible. Um, we want to to connect with people more than anything else. So on, on that level, on just like, this is a good story more than anything. So I think the reason our audience keeps coming back for more, I think the reason that, that we have such big launch days is because they know they're going to get something cool when they, when they uh, back one of our books. 
I love that. And I mean, it sounds like you've given your audience like a lot of trust. Um, they know mm -hmm. what to expect and you guys haven't stopped. Like it's, you guys have had so many releases and you're so consistent. Um, I would also say like, that's a big contributing factor that you haven't let people forget about you or what you're doing. Um, and in, yeah, for in sure. general, it could be years between books. So doing mm -hmm. more than one a year. And it sounds like what you've done, what you said five or so this year already. Uh, so this year we did the uh, the Mechaton trade. Uh, we did Smut number one. We did an enamel pen uh, thing over on uh, Backer Kit. Uh, we did Frankenstein the Unconquered number five, the series finale for that one, and now Smut number two. So yeah, this is our fifth campaign of the year. Um, which, yeah, is exhausting, but it, it feels great. And, <laughs> and, and even more worrisome, we're actually, we want to kick up production uh, next year as well. So <laughs> it's going to be even more stuff, but... <laughs> And it, that's the thing. You love it, though. And it's it's your passion. Yeah. And so like, as crazy as I, it sounds and how much work it is, I'm sure it's and stressful for sure. But like, it's all worth it in the end, you know? Oh, 100%. And I, I don't like, you know, in no way do I not consider myself lucky to be able to do that. The fact that I get to treat this like a job um, is not a position that everyone else has. And I'm, I'm very cognizant of that. I don't want to like go around giving people advice on what to do. And like, it just conflicts with the reality of like, I work a nine to five. I, I can't, you know, do that. Mm -hmm. Like do what you can. That's the important thing. Exactly. Um, yeah. What, what you get in is, is what you're going to get out. But if you can't put in all that much, that's not something to beat yourself up over, put out the best book possible and people will be there for the next one. And I think another thing to remember is that a, th a thing I think a lot of people forget is that Kickstarter is the beginning. It's not the end. Like mm -hmm. that's just the start of this book, the release, the the getting it printed, getting it put into production and being able to like carry it around at cons for like the rest of the year or so. So like oh, for sure. no matter what success or what number you hit on that Kickstarter, like now it's time to market it and put it out there in people's hands. You know, that's the next big phase. Um, and I'm sure that is also a big contributing factor to people coming back to you is that, you know, people can rely on your delivery overall totally. with what you've done. Um, so what got you, you know, in general, you said you were uh, doing comic book journalism right before you were making comics. What got you into just wanting to shift from that into creating and what what makes you want to create comics? Well, the, the comic creation did come first. That was, oh. that was, I got into, uh, I got into comics journalism because I wanted to learn more about what was being made right now, get to read, you know, I, uh, at the time I was living in, uh, central Arkansas and we have, uh, one comic shop. Uh, we had two and, uh, it closed down. So now we have one. Um, and it wasn't all, you know, it was out of the way. It wasn't the most friendly place. So I, I really didn't feel like I had the best connection to uh, the comics community, to, especially to indie comics, which is what I've always cared about. Um, super Superhero comics have just never really appealed to me. So I wasn't that kid that was, you know, re reading Spider-Man every month uh, since I was 12. That's Dalton. That's my, my writing partner. And that's, he was the one who sort of dragged me into all this. Um... So, yeah, I, I uh, signed up uh, with uh, Comic Book Yeti, a, a, a mm. comics journalism site that's been around for years now. Yeah. And that uh, still does some of the best, I think, comics journalism in, in the business. Um, and just really fell in love with the medium with, the, you know, it, it gave me an opportunity to read a wide breadth and dive really deep at the same time and figure out kind of what makes comics tick. Um, now I did that with, cause I, I wanted to write stories and I've always wanted to write stories uh, without at times that's been novels at times that's been then film. Uh, and like I said, my buddy Dalton got me into comics. Uh, and the more I read of comics and the more I, I dived into it, the more I fell in love with it and, and saw how, especially in comparison to something like a film, it's imminently doable, mm -hmm. uh, hard to do, no doubt about it. But whereas with a film, you need all this technical knowledge and just money out the wazoo team and, aligning and, schedules uh, like actors yeah. like you, then that's just setting if up you think, <laughs> yeah. if you think like 
putting together a 30 day Kickstarter campaign or trying to coordinate like an artist, a color, a colorist and a letterer to like work together is difficult. Try working with like actors and, and camera crew and lighting. Yep. It's a nightmare. Um, so yeah, it, it was, it was the happy middle ground between I get to work with people and I get to uh, actually make something because it's because it's not a, a chaotic mess. Uh, and yeah, I've, I've just I've never really I've, I've never stopped working on those other things either. But the comics have definitely taken a front seat uh, ever since we, we started back in what, 2018? Yeah. Dude, I love that. Dude, that's crazy because Apollo technically started in 2018 as well. We were a podcast and we, we just have been pu publishing the last year and mm -hmm. a half, almost two years now. And it's it's interesting seeing like the, the year alignment of being like, okay, I'm going to do this. You know what I mean? That's when we dove in and we we're just like, this is this is what we're doing. And that's how the show started and it evolved into mm -hmm. this. And, and now I'm sitting here with creators like you, which is insane. Um, but dude, I love, I love everything you're doing. I love what you've done. Um, I loved meeting you at Baltimore and just seeing what you had on your table because your, your books like speak to like such a great group of people. Um, and like my girlfriend Lex and I, we saw your books and we're like, we need to support this dude and check out his stuff. Um, and I, I love all of that. Uh, where can people go to like go and purchase your books to support you as a creator and find all these awesome things? Sure thing. Uh, I Whenever I'm running a Kickstarter, that's the most direct way to find pretty much all of my books. You can, yeah, you can find a way to grab stuff. Uh, I do have a website, wellsthompson.com, um, as well as a newsletter called uh, Comics, Cats, and Cocktails, uh, which I uh, should have been writing uh, before I came on the podcast instead of what I was doing, which was playing Slay the Spire. Um, <laughs> nice. uh, uh, so th those are th the website and the, the newsletter are great places to like keep caught up on what I'm doing and, and figure out at the very least when the next time you can grab something is. Uh, I'm also, I try to stay active at, during the con circuit. I'm going to Grand Rapids this weekend. Cool. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and yeah, I, where can you find me? The, the answer is sporadically, who knows, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I almost, I, I try to have a Kickstarter running through most parts of the year. So that would be, that's, that's the best place to grab whatever is new and, as well as my back catalog is always on there as well. Awesome. So it sounds like we're going to hear a lot more from you as some of these Kickstarters come on. So please fill out the spotlight form whenever you're launching your next project so we could bring you on and we could make it happen. Um, I'm totally. so happy for your success and it's really inspiring. Um, even for me as a publisher and a creator myself, I love seeing creators like you hit those numbers and find your audience and grow from there. Um, it really, I feel like it really does give creators a lot of hope um, and something to aspire towards as well. So, you know, thank you for your time. Thanks for stepping into the spotlight and we definitely need to get a longer inspired ink interview in because you have a lot of knowledge and history to uncover here that we're discovering thank right you. now. So um, any quick shout outs you want to give before we sign off today? Oh, geez. Um, shout out to myself. No, <laughs> uh, no. So there's definitely a couple of, uh, of people that I'll uh, uh, point to. Uh, Rachel Merrill is a really cool artist that's, that's doing a stretch goal uh, for us when we get to 7,500. Uh, but she's also running her own campaign called uh, Death to Pachuco. Uh, number one, it's a really cool, like, uh, 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 World War II era noir. Um, definitely recommend checking that out. That launched uh, just a couple days ago as well. Um, one of my favorite comics... Uh, right now just in general crowdfunding wise is sorry give, it's a book called head cases uh, mm. by uh, leslie julian uh super good really really underrated crew uh highly recommend checking that out there's like 58 backers on on the book it deserves to be like blown up to the number one spot in my opinion um and yeah, uh, uh, and big shout out to uh, Chloe Brailsford, who's the one of the uh, uh, cover artists that I've been working with. Uh, she's phenomenal. She she brought such a great energy to the product or to the project. And uh, yeah, I I just I really enjoy working with her. So big big shout out to her. 
Love it, dude. Love everything you're doing. Hope to stay connected more, and we'll bring you back on the show very soon. Um, congrats, Wells, and congrats on making your goal on this current Kickstarter too. So thank lots, you so much. Lots yeah, thanks for it. having me on. I, it's always nice to get like someone else's perspective on your work because truly, you are your worst critic a lot of the time. And hearing yeah. someone be like, "Yeah, what you're doing is really inspiring," you're like, "Thank you." I, I feel you 100. <laughs> Well, we'll speak soon. Thank you so much, man. Thanks for stepping in the spotlight and we'll bring you back very, very soon. Absolutely, man.